Hi, welcome to this video where I'm going to discuss wound rotor induction motor rotors. Uh, so the wound rotor induction motor, WRIM, uh, is a, it's similar to a regular motor in terms of the stator, right? It uses a conventional stator, but what's different about it is the actual rotor. So I have one here. So now in a standard rotor, right, we have our end rings um, and they conduct our rotor bars together. They short them out at the end. But in a wound rotor motor, now it's a special application motor, but it looks like this. Now what we have is in, in the rotor is actually conventional insulated windings, just like in the stator. Coming off of each of those windings is three conductors, one per phase, and they connect to slip rings, which then connect to brushes, which then connect to external resistance. So we're gonna take a look at this rotor uh, and why it's built like that and talk about it. And we're gonna finish up this awkward picture here. So let's get going and talking about that. So a wound rotor induction motor, rotor. Now, why would I use this wound rotor motor? Well, like I said, it's connected eventually to uh, adjustable or variable resistors, right? So I can adjust the resistance of the rotor. Now, if you've been following along, you know that changing the resistance of a rotor can drastically affect the output torque as well as the required current to start that rotor. Um, so how it works. So these are my rotor windings right here. Rotor windings. Really squeaky marker. So my rotor windings are conventional insulated windings. Now, how those are connected, uh, what happens from there is these will connect over to these slip rings. Now the slip rings are just smooth rings mounted on the shaft of the motor so that when they're spinning, we can connect onto them. So now, those are, like I said, those are slip rings. Right, so our rotor windings, instead of being shorted with end rings, they're connected out to those slip rings mounted on the shaft of the rotor. Then from the shaft of the rotor we use brushes, which basically rest on the slip rings to basically provide a path for current to flow. So those are brushes. Okay, now from the brushes, the brushes are going to connect over to my external resistor, kind of like that. So now the idea here is with this external resistor bank, what I can do is at start, okay, and this is really important, so at start, okay, I'm gonna have a high resistance, right, and a, a low inductance, or low X, right? So it's similar to a design D rotor. Now what that does is that gives me a really, really high starting torque, but a very low starting current. So I'm gonna get you know, 275, 300% of my starting torque and a low starting current. So a low inrush current, that's awesome. The problem normally with the D is that it's very inefficient uh, at, later on because of that high resistance. But as this motor starts to spin, what we do is we start to adjust that resistance and we lower the resistance as the motor starts spinning. So as we lower the resistance, what happens is at run, we still have a low inductance, but now we have a low resistance, right? So now as it's running with a low resistance, it runs as a very efficient motor. So it kind of, we say it, you know, it starts like a D, NEMA rotor design D, and we say it runs like an A, just because it's very efficient, right? Now that's awesome. So I can get the best out of both worlds from this motor, right? That's my advantages of this motor. Really high starting torque, low starting current. I really like that. Starts like a D, runs like an A. That's awesome. But of course, there's gonna be some disadvantages. 
or else we'd make every motor like this. So some of our disadvantages, there's a higher cost to this motor. This motor is more expensive. The insulated windings, the brushes, the slip rings, the adjustable resistance, right? The additional maintenance required to maintain all that equipment, right? Bl uh, slip rings, brushes, they need changed out every once in a while. Resistors need maintenance, right? There's often gonna be contactors and stuff in place in that external resistance, right? So maintenance of that. Also, I have to buy all that extra equipment, right? So that's an additional cost. And unfortunately, the motor is actually physically larger because it has to house the brushes and the slip rings on the shaft. So it's larger equipment and it's a much higher cost, right? So the equipment is more expensive, you need more of the equipment and you're gonna have to maintain it over time. So those are some big disadvantages, which is why we see these a little bit less often nowadays, right? But they still exist, they still have that high torque um, there's still a lot of them around. Now, one other cool thing is it's not common anymore, right? With VFDs now, speed control is very easy, but you used to be able to use a wound rotor induction motor for limited speed control, right? So that was something you could do with them is limited uh, speed control. So now a couple things with limited speed control, again, Using VFDs now, you're not gonna use a wound rotor motor for this, but what you used to be able to do is even when the motor was running at full load, you could increase the resistance a little bit. Increasing the resistance would increase the slip on the motor, which would then obviously slow down, the, like the rotor would slow down. So you could do that, right? Very inefficiently, because all of that waste was going to heat, so it's a very inefficient. Uh, as well as it was only really good from like ha uh, half load to full load speed, right? You couldn't really go down to like, you know, 10, 20, 30%. It was really only good for like full load speed to half load speed, right? So very limited speed control. Um, so that was just an option that you used to have or that you have with the wound rotor motor. Um, so I do hope this video helps. Again, just a very basic overview of a wound rotor motor. Um, and some of the components. So thank you so much for watching. Check out some of my other videos below and have yourself a great day.